Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I'm going to be crafting with one of my favorite craft materials, um, tin cans. I've done a similar project. I made a frame out of some tin cans and I'll put the link to that uh, tutorial in the comment section of this video. But I'm going to experiment a little bit more by using this tin cans to make some frames for some small mirrors for some upcycled home decor. So the first thing you're going to need is just your little piece of mirror. I'm using this small oval shape and you're going to want some corrugated cardboard, a pencil or pen to draw out your shape. And then I, you can cut the cardboard with anything you like, but I like to use this grapefruit knife. Um, you can get them in a lot of different styles. Some of them have like a double tip down here or something. They're weird, but this one is just uh, serrated on both sides. It's got a tiny bit of a curve here. And then it, the thing I like about this one is that it has really small teeth. I bought another one um, that was similar, but it had bigger teeth and it's just harder to use. These tiny little teeth give a nice smooth cut. I just have a regular cardboard box and I've gone ahead and I've traced around my mirror shape and then to make the frame size I measured this uh, two and a half inches all the way around and then drew, uh, drew another oval. You can certainly make the frame any size you want or any shape you want just based on uh, what you like with the mirror that shape that you have. So I've got my shape traced out uh, two times, uh, once on this side and once down here. And the first piece, I'm going to cut out the inside circle and the outside circle. And the second piece, I just want to cut the outside edge, even though I have the inside circle traced on there. That'll be to, so that I can line up the mirror on that. This will be the back piece. So what I like about this knife is that it's just really easy to start the cuts. You just kind of work your way all the way through. And then you can just use it kind of like a saw. And with these small teeth, it's very easy to guide the knife and to just stay on the line. So I'm going to get these two shapes cut out and then I'll be back. So I've got my two cardboard shapes here and the next thing I want to do is cut some fabric to cover my cardboard pieces. So I've got some scrap black fabric here. And I'm just going to use one piece. So what I want to do is I want to be able to cover the back of the cardboard. So I'm going to trace around this shape and then I'll cut it out about three quarters of an inch bigger so that I can wrap the edges around. So I just want to place it on here where I have some extra room. And then I've got a white gel pen that I can use to trace. You don't have to be really precise because this part isn't going to show, but like I said, I just want to leave about three quarters of an inch all the way around. And then the other thing I have here is uh, it's called Wonder Web. You use it in sewing, but you can also use it for cardboard. And because I'm going to be gluing or adhering this to my cardboard, I could use glue to glue it on, but uh, this just gives you a nice smooth finish. So I'm going to cut out another shape 
in this oval shape and this time I can just cut it exactly the size of my cardboard. So I'm going to take this over to my iron. I want to be sure I'm putting the fabric on this side so I can still see my oval or my smaller oval. So basically this piece is just going to kind of act as a glue once it's heated up by the iron. So I'll press that on there and then we'll be back to wrap the edges around. So you can see I've got my fabric adhered to the cardboard. It's pretty tight on there. I mean you could pull it off if you wanted to but you can see it's got a nice smooth finish to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is just use my scissors to cut every three quarters of an inch or so, not quite to the cardboard, until I get all the way around. Alright, so I've made it all the way around and now I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue. If you've never used this glue, it's not a great glue to get on your fingers. It doesn't wash off real easily. But the great thing about it is that it grabs really quickly. So I'm just going to put a little dab on for each of my little fabric tabs for about five or six. I only want to do as many as I can hold. And then I'll just pull them tight. Make sure they're as smooth as possible and I'm just going to hold them there for a minute or two or I don't know probably 15 seconds is about all it takes for it to grab. And then I'll just keep moving all the way around. You don't need a lot of the glue and like I said this part isn't going to show. You just want a nice clean back part and you want your edge of the cardboard to be covered with the fabric. So there's the back piece. For my top piece, I have some of my same fabric that I've cut and sewn into a nice long strip. It's about an inch and a half wide I guess. And what I need to do with this piece is put my fabric on the edge and wrap both sides of it and then I'll do the same thing on the inside of the little donut shape. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue again and I'm going to start by just gluing it on the edge here. I'll just lay down a little bit of glue and then I'll try to get this as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect but you want enough to wrap around both sides. Just hold that in place for a little bit and then I'll continue gluing around. And then once I get to the end, I'm going to trim it off and just leave a little bit to tuck underneath. And then I just need to use my scissors to snip about every three quarters of an inch on both sides. And I'll go ahead and use the Fabri-Tac glue to glue these tabs down as well.
All right, so as I said, this is the back piece. So I'm just gonna set it aside for now. And this is the piece that the design is gonna go on to. So a couple of notes about the design. You can kind of do anything you uh, want. I've come up with a couple of basic shapes here. So I'm gonna do kind of this shape, which fits into this shape. And then I've got this other bigger piece that I'm gonna um, cut out. Now I'm using parchment paper for my pattern. You could certainly use whatever you wanted. I liked the parchment paper just because I could kind of see through it. So when you're making your design, you want to be sure that you are cutting your pieces small enough to leave little gaps between them. So you're kind of making puzzle pieces out of your paper to start with. But you want to make sure that you have at least an eighth of an inch gap between all of your pieces. And you want to make sure that you have a gap on the edges as well. So you need a gap here from the bottom of the piece and from the top of the piece. And then you want space between the pieces as well. So these are my three pattern pieces because then this shape is repeated up here and this shape is repeated up here and then I'll copy that so that it's a mirror image on this side. The only other thing you want to be sure about your pieces are that they aren't too big to fit on the tin cans. So this is about as big of a piece as you could work with uh, in, as far as length goes. Unless you had a really big can. So. I'm going to switch to cutting the cans now. And for that, you're going to want to be sure that you have some heavy duty tin snips. I like these pair because they have a, a scissor handle. I think they're about $15 at Home Depot. They also make a shorter uh, set, which I'm going to try as well. But I think sometimes you might want all of the leverage that you get from these longer scissors and they look kind of awkward but they're easier to use than you might think. So I've got my can here and I usually like to start on the seam if I can find it. Sometimes they don't have them so I just take this sticky part and cut down that part. And it's a little tough to get through the top ridge But like I said, these actually cut pretty easily. Now they don't always fit, the scissor part won't always fit between here. So you have to, you do have to bend your can a little bit to be able to get down there farther. Now I'm not gonna use the bottom of the can, so I'm gonna cut into it a little bit. just to give myself more cutting room to cut the bottom off. You might want to wear gloves <laughs> to protect your hands because you are going to get some sharp edges here, so be careful. Sometimes it helps if you switch angles. Like I said, the scissor part of this is pretty easy to use, but sometimes it's hard to get the snipper part where you need it because of the can's shape. It kind of force fights against you a little bit. Some cans are a little harder to work with than others do. You might find a particular brand of can that's easier to cut for you. But if you're patient, you can get it done. Like I said, be very careful of the sharp edges. So, the other thing I need to do before I try to flatten it out is I'm gonna trim off some of these really rough snags here on the all of my cuts. And then I need to cut this 
top edge off as well. All right, it's still not safe, but I've got some of the worst pieces off. And the first thing I wanna do is flatten this out. So to start with, I'm gonna just use my hands to, to open it up some. And this is here again where some cans may be easier to work with. And this takes a little time, so I'm gonna start by just opening it up with my hands. I don't wanna fold it, I don't wanna get a bend or a crease in it. So I'm just gonna work with it slowly. And then, once I have it opened up a little bit, I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna roll it over my leg the opposite direction. All right, so this is about as much as I can do with just sort of worrying it with my hands. And you wanna be able to flatten out your piece with your hands before you move on to this next step. So my edges are still pretty curly, but you can see that I can get it flat, pressing on it and I'm not actually making any folds or crinkles in it. So I'm working on about an inch and a half piece of foam. You could probably use a towel or a cushion. You do want to protect it, so I just have a cardboard box here. And I'm gonna press my piece down a few more times. And then I've got a rolling pin here as well. So what I want to do is just to kind of roll out my piece, putting it as flat as I can without actually making a crease in it. And then I'm going to use my rolling pin to encourage it to stay flatter, which is not an easy job. It's getting a little flatter. It's very uncooperative though. Once you have it flat enough to squash down a little more easily, you can go at it from the other direction. Don't be afraid to push the foam all the way down. Getting closer. So now I have it pretty flat. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my hammer just to tap down uh, and try to smooth it out a little bit more. I thought I would kind of smash the ribs, but it's not really. And I think it is helping some. rolling it one more time but you really can't get it a whole lot smoother than this and uh, the tacks are gonna help hold it down plus you're gonna cut it out so this is probably about as good as you're gonna get it uh, flattened out so here's where it gets interesting I've decided I'm gonna use the silver side and I have my three pattern pieces here so I need two of these four of these and two of these. So I think I can get one of these out of each of that and I can get two out of here. And then I'm gonna use the lids for my little arch piece, or I don't know what they are, my little top and bottom pieces. So 
So in order to hold my pattern pieces while I cut them, I found the easiest way to do that was with some binder clips. And you can't always get uh, a hold of, of the piece the way you want it, but if you trim off some of the can, you can go ahead and trim it and then clip it and move your way around the can. So let's move this stuff out of the way. And I'll cut these two pieces first. It's not always easy to get a curved angle, so if you have to just kind of cut some of the piece out of your way, that's fine. Continue cutting. This is going to have a lot of sharp edges too, so you want to be careful. But there is my top piece, and you can see I've got space at the top and the bottom, or bottom and the top, I guess. I'm saying that backwards get my scraps out of the way here and I'll go ahead and cut my second piece here and I'll just continue cutting my pieces out using my binder clips and laying them out on my uh, frame here So there's my design. I don't know, I might play around with it a little bit and who knows, I might change my mind and decide to use some of the gold. Maybe that's sort of fun. I don't know. Anyway, the main point is that I've got my puzzle pieces on here and like I said, I've got some ed I've got some room between the ed both edges and some room between the pieces. So I need to make sure that I have enough space to get my thumbtacks in. So I may have to trim up some corners here, little tips, but once I've decided how I want to lay this out, um, whether I'm going to use some gold or not, I will go ahead and use some E6000 glue to glue these pieces down and then I want to put a lot of weight on it in order to hold the pieces in place and I'll let that sit overnight. All right, I'm gonna switch gears here a little bit to this step, which is optional, but I think it kind of gives a nicer looking edge to your piece. So I'm gonna sandwich between my two cardboard pieces, I'm going to sandwich some little uh, silver pull tabs, but because I don't want their, uh, I don't wanna hit the pull tabs with the thumbtack, so I'm gonna cut the pull tabs in half with my metal cutters so that I have a piece kind of like this and then I want the smooth edge facing forward and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue it to my back cardboard piece so that it just sticks out a tiny bit to make sort of a silver scalloped edge around where the two pieces of cardboard are going to come together. So I have to cut a whole lot of pull tabs And then what I'm gonna do is I'll use the Fabri-Tac glue to glue the pull tabs on just because it uh, grabs much quicker. And then I'll use um, a little bit of Fabri-Tac to glue my mirror in here where the oval is drawn. 
and then I will use E6000 glue to glue the two pieces of cardboard together. So like I said, I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue here, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down, and then lay these right along the edge so that the tip of the curve is just lined up with the outside edge of the fabric. So I want to do one more thing before I glue my two pieces of cardboard together. I'm going to put some little spacers in the field of the cardboard right here to hold it more level with the pieces that I've put around the edge here. But I want to make sure that I'm putting the little spacers in spots where I won't hit them with my thumbtack. So based on my design here, I can put one in the middle right at the top and a couple on the sides of these big pieces. So I'm just going to put a couple of little spacer pieces, I guess, to hold the cardboard a little more level. So I'm ready to glue the two pieces together. Now you could use the Fabri-Tac glue if you wanted probably for this. I'm going to switch to my E6000 glue just because it's a little thicker. Alright, I'm going to put quite a lot of glue on here because you can see that these pieces are still bent so they're not going to obviously lay down until I put the weight on them. So I want to make sure that I get plenty of glue on the corners oopsie, and edges anywhere that it's kind of sticking up. And I'm not going to worry about pressing it down yet, but I do want to get it just in place. Alright, let me go find something to put on here to hold it all down and we'll be back tomorrow. My piece has been sitting overnight so the tin is fairly well secured. There's still some, you know, edges that are sticking up a little bit. But this is the fun part, at least I think it's the fun part. This is where your design really kind of comes together. So I'm going to use my thumbtacks and a little bit of E6000 glue because I don't want the thumbtacks to come back out. And then I'm just going to punch them through the cloth and the cardboard to close off all the edges here. So I want to make sure I'm catching the edge of the metal and kind of just barely overlapping or touching the last thumbtack that I've put in. And I'm just going to go all the way around and make sure that I'm covering up all of my rough edges with the thumbtacks. And I'm protecting my mirror here with a back of with some paper so that I don't get glue on my mirror. You can clean it up, but it's just easier if you don't have to. This sometimes this glue kind of has strings to it sometimes. So I'm just going to work my way all the way around the design until I've got it filled in with my thumbtacks. I've got everything done but the outside edge and I just wanted to make a couple comments about that because I put the little metal edging here. Sometimes I might hit these uh, pull tabs with my thumbtacks. So in some cases I may need to kind of clip off part or all of the nail head from the thumbtack 
And to do that, I just have some little, I think they're nail pullers or something like that. And it's very easy just to shorten up the point of the thumbtack if you need to do that. Obviously, it's preferable if you go between the tabs or if you're in the hole where the tab, pull tab is, and you can use the whole thumbtack, then that's preferable. But if not, you can use these kind of cutters just to cut down the thumbtack so that you can get it into the uh, piece flush with and flat. So once I get these last couple of tacks in here, I'm going to go ahead and put my weight back on because some of the tacks are not holding the edges down quite as tightly as you might want. And you want to make sure that you're flattening everything back out. So I'm going to get these last couple of tacks in and then I'll get my weights back out and let this sit again overnight. So there's just one more thing I need to do to finish up my mirror. I've got a couple more pull tabs. I'm going to use a couple more thumbtacks and you could use rope or whatever, but I just have a piece of plastic bag that I've braided together for my rope to make my hanger hook. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again soon in the lab. Thanks again.